This laptop lives squarely at the intersection of performance, pricing, and the right combination of parts to make it an affordable portable powerhouse. And who might this mysterious mobile marvel be? Well, I think the alien head makes it's the Alienware M16. Thanks to our friends at Best Buy, we're checking out a very specific slice version of the M16. And along the way, we're gonna share some laptop buying tips and tricks so you don't end up with, you know what, a money pit. Unless it's like Uncle Scrooge McDuck kind of money pit, which honestly, that'd be pretty cool. I, though, you know what, I always thought, Brian, jumping into a money bin, painful. painful. It just, yeah, I don't, it, physics, so buying laptops, it's kind of like a real-time strategy game. It's all about resource management, getting the best components for the price without being yelled at to construct additional pylons. Thank you, StarCraft. Now for your best chance of success, start by making a list of your needs, what you're gonna use it for, for instance, and set your budget, or what you can and should reasonably spend. If you're all business, Finding an enterprise or ultrabook laptop is probably gonna be your best play. But if you're business up front, but party in the back, like my sweet mullet rig, I'm still doing the, the wig thing, or you're a college student splitting your screen time between schoolwork and school and fools online, getting a system that balances performance and power is a primary priority. So let's think about this. What? is a reasonable amount of money to spend on a laptop. In the current market, we've seen several great options at different price points, but if you're looking for a gaming laptop that has enough power to drive modern titles, we would recommend aiming for the $1,500 mark. This is a good place to start because there are a bunch of great possibilities on either side of that number. For example, hey, Enter the Alienware M16 that we had over at Best Buy. This has an Intel Core i7-13700HX CPU and an NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU on sale for $1399.99. You heard that right, $1400 for a solid Alienware laptop. We've actually been checking out a few different Alienware laptops and we've been surprised by their value and performance. And that's a story for another video. And trust me, we're covering like the M18, the X, these are great laptops. Now we're gonna be using the M16 as a baseline for laptop shopping because it's a really good deal at the price and it provides a starting point for talking about things like what kind of GPU and CPU you're looking for or how to pick your right display or other cost saving options like build quality and keyboard. And it all starts with the balance of power, CPU and GPU. The CPU and GPU are at the heart of what is driving performance for a laptop. Since these parts aren't user upgradable in most laptops, this is a good place to over budget. In other words, getting a CPU and a GPU in the mid to upper mid range can help ensure that you have enough power for today that your laptop can still serve your needs four or five years from now. This is where things can get tricky though. We've seen laptops with modern CPUs or GPUs that are paired from like a few generations back. Machines like that can shave some dollars off the price, but it can also shave off some of that longevity you're looking for. And you're left with a, a bit of a potato. In the case of the Alienware M16, the Core i7 and the RTX 4070 make a great combination. They're both current gen mobile parts and they work really well for 1440p gaming, especially with titles that take advantage of features like DLSS and frame generation. Cyberpunk 2077 is a great example of this. With DLSS on balance, frame generation on, and ray tracing set to ultra, we saw an average frame rate of 72 frames per second on this laptop. In other words, the M16 pushed beyond 60 frames per second in one of the most system resource heavy games with settings wide open. Wide, just wide, wide open. But you know what, Roby? I don't play Cyberpunk, what about other games? Well, the M16 can put on a great show with 96 frames per second on Forza Horizon 5, 145 in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and 103 in Tiny Tina's Wonderland. What about competitive titles like, like Snake? No, no, that's not a good one. Well, what about like 115 frames per second in Modern Warfare 2, or 217 frames per second in Apex Legends, or 251 frames per second in Fortnite? or a, a lot of frames in Minesweeper. Point being, 
is these frame rates for this laptop are nice. And they're only as nice as the display that they show up on. Ooh, we've transitioned. We could do a whole separate video on laptop screens and monitors alone, but we need to stick to some of the basics. Let's look at the three R's, like roll them with me. Arr, arr. The first is ratio. <laughs> it's just, no, it's, it's just ratio. Okay, no, we're not talking about the unspoken rule of social media. We're talking about aspect ratio. Most TVs and monitors have an aspect ratio of 16 by nine, but in the past two to three years, laptop manufacturers have been slowly moving toward a 16 by 10 inch aspect ratio. This change gives users more screen space without increasing the overall footprint of the laptop. Keep an eye out for this because some laptops are sneaking in older tech standards into newer devices by using 16 by nine inch screens. So you wanna look for a display that has a plus sign next to it in its designation, like FHD plus or QHD plus. Essentially a plus means that it's 1080p or 1440p with bonus space. Now this typically means you're gonna get a screen with like a resolution of 1920 by 1200 or 2560 by 1600 respectively. And then there's the second arm. Um, resolution, or resolution if you're not weird like me. When looking at laptop displays, you want a resolution that matches the power of your GPU. This is super important. A good rule to keep in mind with resolution is the higher the resolution, the more powerful the GPU you'll need to drive. What about CPU, Roby? No, actually, the higher the resolution you step up, the more the GPU becomes important and the less the CPU becomes important, especially when you use higher end graphic settings. In the case of the Alienware M16, the RTX 4070 functions really well at pushing high fidelity graphics at 1440p or QHD+. It would also do very well in 1080p or FHD+. But here's the deal, guys. A lot of times, laptop manufacturers will try and push 4K. They'll, it's got 4K and I've got a 4070. But you know what? A 4070 is not powerful enough to push 4K performance. Okay, so that brings us to our third R refresh rate. While they are two different metrics, looking at refresh rate and frame rates together can be helpful to aim for the right fit. For example, the Alienware's M16 16 inch display has a refresh rate of 165 Hertz. In our tests, we saw numbers above and below 165 frames per second. That means the M16 is pushing numbers within the general ballpark of the refresh rate. And for competitive titles, no, not Snake or Minesweeper, but things like Call of Duty or Fortnite or Apex, hitting above 165 or near 165 is important because the higher the refresh rate, the better your gaming is going to be. And if you want to see a whole video on that, check out our whole thing right here from Corsair. It was awesome. We did a lot to show you kind of how that works. Now, this is where having a panel with a high refresh rate and adaptive sync technology like NVIDIA's G-Sync comes into play. Features like G-Sync help the display operate at what's called a variable refresh rate, adapting to the game's performance to provide a smoother visual experience. Did we mention that the M16 display is a G-Sync display? Yes. Now, what about touchscreens or OLEDs? Honestly, this is a place where you can spend a lot of money. OLED displays are stunning. I mean, literally will melt your face beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I mean, every time I show it to Brian, he, ju he just, he just cries. It's just, he's just weeping. But it's, they're expensive and you're weeping in your wallet. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Now the same is true for Dutch displays and touch displays don't really add much to the gaming experience. So why spend extra money on a feature you won't need? Now, if you're an artist or something like that, pens, things like that, those matter a whole lot more. And there are other options. So to recap on displays, avoid the extras that aren't value adds to you. Pay attention to the aspect ratio and make sure that the resolution and refresh rate makes sense for your components. Just like rolling your R's all the time, do it. It's gonna be the new future. Now let's talk about some of the supporting players, the system memory or RAM and storage. Do not, do not buy a laptop until you know how easy it is to upgrade these two things. Watch some videos, read reviews, do your homework, because this is one place where with a little bit of know-how, personal investment and the bravery to tinker, which you should not be afraid of, you can extend the life of your laptop and maybe even save a bit of money. I think the M16 is a great example of user upgradability. Out of the box, this configuration comes with a one terabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Now that's a decent amount of storage space and, and RAM. But when you have games like Baldur's Gate 3 taking up 150 gigs 
or Cyberpunk 2077 that takes up around 80 gigabytes, you're going to run out of room fast. Fortunately, the Alienware M16 has extra M.2 slots and support for up to nine terabytes of storage. That is a lot of storage and a lot of games or a lot of pictures of Brian's hamster, which not sure why he takes pictures of his hamster, but he's got a lot of them. So God bless him. What about RAM? Is, is 16 gigabytes enough? I'm, I'm actually really glad you asked. For the average use, 16 gigs is all right, but for gaming, 32 gigabytes is actually starting to become ideal. With DDR5 RAM kits from companies like Corsair, G-Skill, and Kingston, priced for around $150, this is an easy grab it later to upgrade option. And that's even before any sweet Roby Tech deals, which you should absolutely follow at Roby Tech Deals on Twitter because Tom is finding the deals all the time. Now that's right, I've got connections and we share them with you every day on our socials. So look for something that you can upgrade. It's very easy, don't be afraid to tinker, and you can really improve the lifetime and performance of your laptop very, very simply. Which takes me to build quality. This is where it can be really helpful to see a PC or a laptop in a store like Best Buy. And it can really help you get a feel for the laptop. Here are a few things to consider when you're looking at build quality. Thing one, do you plan on traveling with this device? If so, make sure the materials can take the wear and tear of traveling in a backpack over time. Things like mechanical joints and connections like the display hinges and USB ports will be able to take the kind of handling over time. Like if you're like a stuntman or like potentially like, I don't know, an assassin. Please don't tell me if you are. Just keep that to yourself. That'll, that'll scare me and I won't sleep well. Thing two. The design of a laptop and the materials used can either help or harm thermal management and airflow. Pay attention to things like air intakes and where they're located, how the laptop vents air under load, and what, when things get hot, where it's really cooking, like this. You know what, it's got this beautiful thing, keeps it off the ground, keeps it nice and cool, and it probably really messed up Brian's shot, but you know what, it's fine. Thing three, how are USB power and display connections laid out? Will cables get in the way of anything in the spaces you're planning on using it? Will it make your desktop look like one of those inflatable flappy arm guys at the heart at the used car lot with USB devices plugged in and shooting out in every direction? These, believe it or not, are actually important questions. As for the Alienware M16, it's decently well built. We wouldn't call the overall construction cheap per se, but we wouldn't recommend throwing it around willy-nilly in a backpack or a bag or, you know, chasing down a possible assailant who's trying to rob your car. Maybe leave it in the car and use something a little bit more formidable. It has enough of a mix of metals and plastics that, you know, carelessly throwing it around might cause it to break. But if you do need something to toss around to defend yourself, you know, I will say the M16 330 watt power brick could be classified as a weapon and that thing is massive. So just go ahead and chase that car guy with your, maybe not, just call the police. It's safer. As for airflow, you know, I showed it a little bit earlier, but the M16 draws in air from the bottom of the laptop and exhausts it through the back like a, like a jet engine. This thing is beautiful back here. This does cause the sides of the laptop to get a bit warm over time, but nothing that made us uncomfortable while using it. You didn't like grab onto it and like scream, ah! You, you know, you, it doesn't leave like a tattoo that says Alienware because it burns into your hands. As for port location, the Alienware M16 has a good mix of port locations. So if you wanted everything plugged into the back except ethernet, you could absolutely do that. And I love it, love it when laptops do that. There is more that I could say about laptop shopping, but the Alienware M16 highlighted a number of areas worth considering when shopping for a mid-range gaming laptop. With its pairing of CPU and GPU, the QHD plus 165 inch display with G-Sync, user upgradability with RAM and storage, as well as its new price point, the M16 is a really compelling option at $1,400. If you've been looking for a gaming laptop, the Alienware M16 with Intel's Core i7-13700HX and Nvidia's RTX 4070 checks all the boxes on our recommendation list. We want to give a huge shout out to Best Buy for sponsoring this video and for giving us the opportunity to check out the Alienware M16. But we wanna know what you think. Let us know down in the comments below. And if you wanna see our full review on these and the other sizes for this, those will be coming very, very soon. Now, while you're down in the comments talking to us all about your ideas and which laptops you're gonna be buying, go ahead and slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this that is equally as entertaining I promise you, you will not sleep like Brian, then you, you should do that. But anyway, thanks for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.